It says here in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see the strange sight why the bush does not burn up. But the Lord saw that he had gone over to look. God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Jump down to verse seven. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers and I'm concerned about their suffering. How many of you know that God is concerned about what you're going through? Verse 10, we jump down to that. God says to Moses, so now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Exodus 4 verse 1, Moses answered, what if... They do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you. Then the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. Can we give God a big shout of praise for that incredible passage of scripture? (laughs) Grab your seat. Grab your seat. Thank you so much, team. Can you believe it's the last Sunday of January already? The year has flown by, has it not? You know, I wanna speak to you today about the beginnings of certain statements we make, particularly this time of the year. I generally believe that at the start of the year or the start of different seasons, transitionary moments of your life, different eras in your life, um, times when there's, there's certain things, winds of change, I just really feel like God is constantly speaking to us. We have a God that speaks to us constantly, even much more so than the Old Testament. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. He's constantly conversing with us. But when God speaks to us, He he is so well in touch with your realities, but He's constantly speaking to you about your next. And it's in these seasons that we might be tempted to make certain statements, ask certain questions of God. And so today I wanna speak to you on the thought out of Exodus 3 and 4 on these beginning statements. What if... What is, and He is. We jump down to Exodus chapter three, we are introduced to Moses in this juncture of his life. He's 80 years old. If you can think about Moses' life in three 40-year lots, lots, segments. The first 40 years, he was a Hebrew boy who'd grown up in the courts of Egypt. He, uh, there's been a sense of disconnect with him because even though he is Hebrew, he's raised in the Egyptian culture. He sees how the Egyptians are treating his fellow countrymen, his fellow ethnic people of his own race being treated as slaves, beating up on them, treating them brutally. So much so that he was so incensed one day that he saw one Egyptian slave driver beating up on a Jew that he engaged in a fight with him and kills him. He's so racked with guilt that at 40 years old, he leaves the palace in Egypt and flees to a place called Midian where he spends the next 40 years of his life in a brand new life, settling into life as he now knows it, being married, has a kid, and works for his father-in-law. Now he's a goat herder, I believe, I guess, for his father-in-law's small business. Goats are us, Midian branch, I guess, something like that. And he's now settled into life. And now in this one random day at work, he sees a bush that's burning even though it's not burning up and it begins to talk to him. I mean, that's a freaky thing. (laughs) Not only is the bush burning but not burning up, it starts to talk to him. This bush starts to talk to Moses about his next. It's a picture in the Old Testament of a New Testament God who desires to converse with us each and every day in different junctures of our lives about what our next steps are. And when God speaks to us, it's rarely the voice of our own souls or our own egos, sometimes when we talk to ourselves, we tell ourselves how bad we are, how untalented we are, how purposeless we are, how useless we are. When God speaks to us, He only ever speaks to us about the people that He wants us to become. And here we see God engaging with Moses and speaking to him. I believe that in 2023, the start of 2023, God is also speaking to you, Kingdom City KL. He he might not be having the the kind of conversations He has with Moses about liberating a million Jews out of slavery, but he's, He's having a conversation with you about your next 
What does your next look like? Maybe God is speaking to you about accelerating your discipleship this year. Maybe He's speaking to you about doing greenhouse this year so that you can grow and mature. Maybe He's asking you for years, you've been coming to this church, but you haven't been a carrier. Maybe God's asking you to give of your life, pour it out for the first time. Maybe you've never been to Connect. Maybe you need to lead a Connect. Maybe you need to share your faith. I don't know what it is, but you can be sure that God is speaking to you about your next. I've been leading people for a long time now. This is what I know. In every juncture of your life, God is constantly speaking to us about our next. It's just that we're not always willing to listen. I think sometimes we don't always want to listen because we're afraid of what he might say. Here Moses stops in the middle of his ordinary work day. It was not uncommon for bush to spontaneously combust in dry, arid regions like Midian. It was not uncommon. It, it, he would have seen that many, many times, herding sheep every day in his routine of his life. But Moses that day decided that there was something special. He was going to have an encounter with God. I just want to say this prophetically if you're watching online and in the room. Today could just be another Sunday, 11 a.m. here in Sunway, where you tick a box, go and have lunch, catch up with a few friends. Or today could be the greatest encounter you've ever had. You get to choose that today, whether you turn and engage with the bush or you just kind of walk past and go, man, I've seen that before. God speaks to Moses about all of these things that he had in mind for Moses. You need to understand this at the start of 2023, God always has you in mind. God had Moses in mind when it came to the liberation of a million Jews out of slavery. Only God could have written the narrative of this, this Hebrew baby that was floated down a river in full view of the Egyptian princess. She picks him up and, and adopts him and raises him in the Egyptian courts where he was feeling a sense of disconnect and he was so incensed, he, he commits this murder, he flees to Midian and now 40 years later, there was this burning bush experience. Only God could have written that narrative. God has a narrative written for you that is uniquely just for you as you would have heard. Your fingerprints are the unique story that he's gonna write for you and he has so much in store for you. And this is what you need to understand about the purposes of God. You are never too old to fulfill the call of God in your life. God comes to Moses at 80 years old. 80 years old, he has a burning bush experience. Thank God Moses didn't disqualify himself at 80 years old. So many of us disqualify ourselves and say that the call of God is just, oh, it's only for the young people, huh? Huh? We just say it's only for the youth, it's only for the young adults. We disqualify ourselves mentally after a certain age. I wanna say this to you, if you're not dead, God's not done. God comes to Moses at 80 years old. If you disqualify yourself because of your age, so much of the Bible will not be relevant to you. Passages like Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says, for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So many of us read it like, for only the young people are His workmanship created in Christ. Come on, for we, we, it's an inclusive word, we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Regardless of how old you are, God has already pre-prepared something for you in 2023. He's already pre-prepared something for you in 2023. I believe, it is my genuine belief that Jesus has more good works for His church to do than His church is actually willing to do. How do I know that? Well, the Bible tells us for 2,000 years, Jesus has been screaming, the harvest is plentiful. I just don't have enough laborers. I have so much work to do. I just have got no one helping me to do it. I can imagine heaven having this door with a sign on it saying, staff wanted. There is a labor shortage when it comes to the kingdom of God. Why is that? Because so many of us discount ourselves from the work of God. I want to say this to you, at the start of 2023, God is speaking to you about what your next is. There is so much more to be done. The pandemic has lied to us that we ought to just bunker down, lock ourselves down. There is no more serving Jesus. I want to say to you, those days are over. It's time for the church to reawaken again. If you've got breath in your lungs today, He's not done with you. God speaks to Moses at 80 years old, out of the bush. Says, Moses, my heart breaks for your people. I want you to go back to Egypt and liberate them. How many of you know that if God were to speak so clearly to you, you would have expected for someone like Moses to say, oh, finally, that's the reason why I left. I was so disgusted by how my people were. He said, send me back there. But no, after 40 years, he settled into the life at Midian. 
And his response to God when it comes to the destiny and purposes of God was this, to ask God the question, what if? How have you ever had God speak to you and the first thing you reply is, what if? What if? What if they do not believe me? What if they don't listen to me? Verse one. What if they said the Lord did not appear to you? Here is the question, what if? You know the question, what if? It's a fear-based question. Moses was not looking for information. He was disclosing the fear in his heart based on what God was asking him to do. I believe that a believer's deepest fears are actually not that Satan would attack you or that you, a great evil might befall you. I believe that a believer's deepest fear is that God would actually call us to a greater life than what we're actually prepared to live. That's what scares us the most. That God would actually call us to live a life that is far greater than what we're prepared to live. That's why we disqualify ourselves. And here's the thing, when we ask what if, it is a fear-based question, it is hypothetical. None of what God had asked Moses to do had actually happened yet, and yet he's already asking what if. What if it's hypothetical, but I will also suggest to you that it's hypothetical because it's also historical. He's afraid of what will be because he knows of what has been. He says, what if they don't listen to me? Because he knows that after living 80 years as a Jew, he knows what the Jews are like. He knows that they're stubborn people. They're even, God calls them a stiff-necked people. He knows after living 40 years in Egypt, his own life experience would tell him that Pharaoh never negotiates. He would know that, that the, the, the lawmakers in Egypt were harsh, and if he were to go back as an ex-murderer, 100% guaranteed that if they found out, he'd be put in jail. So he's asking what if it's hypothetical, but it's also historical. Mm. And here's the thing. As we get older, we have more historical. And so our what ifs become louder. As each year ticks on, we get a year older. I promise you, we're accumulating more of what was that makes us shout what if to drown out the purposes of God. See, as we get older, our what ifs become louder. Come on, are you out there? Because we now have more history of disappointments. We have more history of the things that haven't happened yet. We have more things, more, more, more uh, 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 historical evidence of unanswered prayers than we've got of breakthroughs. So our, now our what-ifs become loud. And you know, I want to suggest to you today that when, when, when God speaks to you, it's time to silence your wrong what-if questions because it's a new day. You might be here today and God says, oh, I, I want you to commit to being part of Connect this year. But you'll think, oh, oh God, God, God. Well, what, what if I commit to going to Connect? But like, like back in 2017 when I went to Connect, I was tired every second Wednesday. But you had enough energy to play futsal on Monday nights. Badminton on Tuesday nights. What if I commit to do greenhouse? Well, what, what if I commit to do greenhouse? I, I, I've never been able to afford money, you know, I've never had enough money, enough history to outshout the purposes of God. Come on, are you out there? What if I lead a connect and I'm, and I'm a bad leader? What if I become a carrier? People find out I'm still struggling with this and that old habit. What if I dare to believe God for a breakthrough and finish 2023 disappointed again? All of these what ifs, they're hypothetical because they're historical. I'm 48 years old this year, and I've even noticed this about myself. My what ifs are loud because I've got a lot of history now. Moses was 80 years old. I want to say this to you. If you've been living longer than, say, 40 years, you've got to fight your what if. See, I asked different kinds of what ifs when I was in my early and mid and late 20s. When I was 29, the kind of what ifs I asked was, what if I planted a church that could change a nation? What if, I, what if I went up to someone who, who, who looks like they're limping and, and pray for their knee? Maybe they're going to get healed. What if I take up leadership? Maybe God's, come on, are you out there? I ask different kinds of what ifs. It's time for Kingdom City to reawaken to the right kind of what ifs again. Come on. The pandemic has lied to you and asked you to ask the wrong kind of what ifs. It's time to come back to become the church that says, what if God can actually change a nation? What if Malaysia could actually become a Christian nation? What if? God could use this army of people to bring the reality of God into this world. God is speaking to you at the start of 2023. You get to decide the kind of what ifs you want to ask.
You can choose to ask, what if I fail? What if I get disappointed again? What if I'm hurt by leadership again? What if I'm, I'm just not good at doing whatever it is he's asking? What if I get stuck in this addiction again? What if I can't afford it? Or you can ask, what if I step into leadership? It could be the most fruitful year of my life. What if I become a carrier? I could discover gifts I never knew I had. What if I enroll for greenhouse? It might accelerate my growth. I don't know. What if you start sharing my faith again? Revival might actually come. Come on. See, Moses asked, what if, what if, what if? You could, it's, at face value, it looks like he's doing his due diligence. I don't know if you understand that phrase, due diligence. It, it looks like he's, he's gathering some facts. Right? But I want to say this to somebody. This is going to help someone. Fear often masquerades as careful. Spiritual hesitancy always masquerades as a mask that's called cautious. Come on, are you out there? When he's asking what if, he wasn't being careful, he was being fearful. So if you tell people, I'm being careful, no, you're not, you're just being afraid. It's time to put the years of fear behind us. Because 2023 is a brand new year for Kingdom City. Come on, are you out there? What if? And he asked God, what if? After God was telling Moses, I'm gonna be with you. Signs and wonders will follow you. You're gonna have great success. The, whole, the presence will go with you. He still asked, what if? Have you ever got asked God, what if? I've asked God a lot of what ifs. Here's the thing, right? When I ask God what if questions, God never gives me the answer I want. God answers Moses' question with a question. Don't you hate that? <laughs> God answering your question with a question. What if, such and such, such. what if I, I, I stutter and no one's, no one's gonna b b b believe me? What if Pharaoh does not negotiate? What if the people don't believe that I've been saved? Come on. Yeah. To which God replies, with another question, what is in your hand? What is? I don't know why you're clapping because it's a silly question. What is in your hand? What sort, of, what sort of answer is that? God knows what this is. Moses knows what this is. God knows Moses knows what this is. Moses knows God knows what this is. What is with this question, what is in your hand, right? <laughs> Can I preach this? As if a shepherd's staff on its own at face value can liberate a million Jews out of slavery. As if a shepherd's staff on its own can turn the heart of Pharaoh. No. When God asks Moses this question, what is? He's asking Moses to trust him that what is in his hand will become one day whatever Moses will need it to be in the future should he say yes to what God is calling him to do. Let me preach this. Some of you are saying, oh, all I have is just, just a few hours on a Wednesday. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what, what can I do with that. I just have a, just these very simple gifts. I've got just a little bit of extra time on a Sunday. What, what can I do with that? I just have a, have a living room, a small living room in my condo. What can I do with that? Moses in Exodus chapter 4 verse 2 had no idea. It just was a shepherd's staff in his hand. He had no idea in the next few verses that as he threw it down, it would turn into a snake. He had no idea a few chapters later that he would touch the Nile River. It would turn into blood and turn Pharaoh's heart. He had no idea that meant that a few chapters after that, he would hold up the staff, the sea would part, and a million Jews would march into freedom. He had no idea that many, many chapters later, he would touch a rock in Horeb, and water would come out to hydrate a nation. You have no idea in the future what, what is in your hand will be. God does. What is in your hand? What is in your hand? Oh, I, I, I've, only, I've only got like a, like a smallish type condo. Do you think I can host Connect? Throw it down. It'll turn into a revival house. Yeah. Throw it down. It'll turn into a revival. Well, I, 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 I don't know. I, I just, you know, I, all I know is to, is, to, is to lay my hand on sick people and just, just pray a simple prayer of faith. What can God do with what is in your hand? Throw it down. It's gonna be a testimony and a praise report one day. What, what, what can you do with a bit of time on a Wednesday? I don't know. Throw it down. It could be your greatest year of accelerated discipleship you've ever had. God is asking Moses, what is in your hand? You guys can say something out of this. What is in your hand? 
God, it's just, it's just five loaves and two fish. You're going to feed thousands one day with that. What, what is in your head? Oh, God, it's, it's only five smooth stones. Well, God says, I only need one smooth stone to kill your greatest giant in 2023. What is in your head? Just a bit of oil, a bit of flour. It's not much, is it, God? It's going to be provision for the rest of your life if you put it in my hand. I don't know where you're at today, but I'm speaking prophetically to somebody in this room. Maybe you're online today, and you doubt what is in your hand. When what is in your hand is put in His hands, it'll become whatever you need it to be in the days ahead. Just say yes. Someone shout amen. And the reason why God had the audacity to ask Moses to look at what is in his hand, because ultimately at face value, it was just a piece of stick with a hook at the end. The reason why there was so much power in the what is, is because he is the great I am. Come with me, come with me. The burning bush speaks to Moses. Destiny, purpose, calling, go back to Egypt. He asked the question, what if, what if God, what if, to which God says, what is? And the only reason why God had the audacity to tell him what is in his hand was because he is the great I am. See, the one answer to all of the million excuses and questions that Moses had was dealt with with this one statement in Exodus 3.14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And this is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. This year, if you're filled with concerns, if you're filled with anxiety, if you're filled with some level of trepidation and hesitancy about what God is calling you to step up into, there is but one answer. He is the great I am. He is the great I am. You know that one solution to a million nightmares is this, wake up. One solution to every questionable fear that you might have is simply that He is the great I am. When you live with a He is mindset, you'll never need to fear. Fear, I believe, kills off more purpose than failure ever will. Because if you feel like you failed, at least you've tried. But fear means you never even sign up for greenhouse. Means you never even get to be a carrier ever. Means you never ever, see, see, Fear will stop you from doing anything. At least if you failed, you've tried. That was good preaching. What is in your hand is only made possible because He is the great I am. I love it that God meets this 80-year-old man when he's settled down 40 years. 40 years is a long time to settle into routine. Waking up early in the morning, opening the sheep, goat pen, taking them from one pasture to another pasture, another pasture, home, dinner, next day, wake up early, put his shepherd's satchel on, take his staff, kiss his kids goodbye, kiss the wife goodbye, again, rinse, repeat, 40 years, God interrupts his 40-year routine with a burning bush and invites this 80-year-old man to say that if you're not dead, I'm not done. I've got more for you, Moses. Invites Moses to live a greater life that he was living in Midian. Can I preach this? I believe sometimes, and this is probably the reason why Moses had so many what if questions. I believe sometimes it's easier for God to get people out of a bad life and into a good life than he can getting us out of a good life into a great life. Everybody wants to be rescued out of a bad life, dysfunction, destitution, hopelessness, into a good life. But God has got His work cut out getting Christians out of a good life into a great life. Because we don't want to leave Midian. I've got my routine locked down now, God. I've got my Saturdays. I've got my Sunday mornings sorted out. This is when I go shopping and I've got my things that I'm doing, this routine. We don't like to leave Midian. And the enemy knows that for 21st century Christians, if he can't steal your salvation from you, he'll keep you living in Midian. If he can't take your salvation from you, he'll make you bury your calling in Midian. It's time for the church to say, I'm ready to leave Midian. 
I want to go from good to great. See, the what if that sometimes we ask, it's a fear of what we might lose. What if I have to give up my free time? What if I have to give up, not just every second Wednesday, Pastor Sean, but every Wednesday if I come to Global Prayer Night as well. It's every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, you know, a lot. What if, what if I have to confront my brokenness? What if I actually have to forgive my dad? What if I actually have to make amends with that person that I was so wronged so many years ago? What, 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 what if I have to, come on. But you will never experience he is turning your what is into a breakthrough if you keep living in the land of what if. For so many of us, we've lived years in the land of what if. You haven't just lived in the land of what if. Some of you have investment properties there. You have like a holiday condo in the land of what if. (laughs) If you keep living in the land of what if, it only has one destination. It'll only ever lead you to this one response to God every time he speaks to you. And that is, no. No. Imagine if Moses continued to live in the land of what if. He would have said, no. We wouldn't be reading about Exodus 5, 6, 7. We wouldn't be reading about the book of Deuteronomy. We wouldn't be preaching today. Preachers all over the world would not be preaching about Moses liberating an entire nation out of slavery. Come on, are you out there? There would be no book of Joshua. Come on. Hello. I wonder today how many testimonies have remained untold because people like you and I have lived in the land of what if for too long. I wonder how many praise reports never make it to the big screen because we've built investment properties in the land of what if. I wonder how much of our city remains without the reality of God because the church has decided that Midian is better than the call of God. It's time to reawaken out of the pandemic to say, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm going to say yes to this burning bush. You know that word no is an interesting word, isn't it? The word no is the beginning of the word no thing. Nothing. And if you live in the land of what if long enough, you'll eventually get to the other side of eternity and have no thing to show for it. No thing eternal. And you'll stand before an audience of one. And all you have to say is, well, Midian was awesome. My prayer for us is that every single person that calls Kingdom City KL home will decide today that we are no longer Midianites, but we're called to liberate the people of our nation. Come on, are you out there? If you get out of the land of what if and start living in the land of he is, the great I am, it'll inevitably lead to a yes. At the start of 2006, your pastor, Pastor Mark, he was my best man at my wedding, actually, six years before that. And, and um, at the start of 2006, he sits on my couch in Perth. He tells me about his burning bush experience. He says, God's actually called me to plant a church in KL right? I started asking what if questions for him. (laughs) He had some what if questions too, but he didn't live there. Because if he lived there, you wouldn't be here today. And I've seen him through the years, ready, fire, aim. He didn't live in the land of what if, he lived in the land of he is the great I am. Come on, I'm here to tell you, Pastor Sean, live in the land of he is the great I am, because this city is too big for two campuses. You need more. You need more. He is the great I am. Stop asking what if. What if I don't have enough carriers? What if I don't have enough regional connect leaders? What if, what if, what if? Start saying he is the great I am. It's only just begun. We are reawakening again. We're coming out of a pandemic. It's time for us to leave Midian.